Tony. This is Paul coming at you from the Friends for Life podcast. And we're a go. All right, so we're here at the first official Friends for Life podcast. FFLPC... C1. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> the first ever, first run of the Friends for Life podcast. And yes, yes. We are live from the office, the Friends for Life office. Mm-hmm. Too in- bad no one can see all this great whiteness. Yeah. Just sailing and, you know... Trust and believe, we're going to set this up to be so much better than this. It's going to have so much more color. It's going to pop so much more. But in the meantime, they see us. I thought, I mean, I thought we looked pretty good today, so I wasn't too worried about the background. I mean, they got enough, yeah, enough good stuff to look at right exactly. here. Exactly. Enjoy. Bask in it. You know, bathe so, in it. <laughs> so the point of this whole endeavor is to try and inform everyone about, you know, your business as a whole and you know the field itself kind of has a lot of misnomers about it and you know we're just trying to bring light to that so right right so like let's let's get your background tony because i don't know honestly i don't know your background in this field start mm-hmm. like what got you into like recreational care and, and, and such well man it, it, it's funny because the very first thing that got me into it was my grandparents well my, my grandmother Uh, She worked for the Lucas County Board of DD, and she kind of just dragged me along for any and all of the events. Now, I say that even kind of not even mentioned in my home life, because my Uncle Larry, who's a very, very, very dear love of mine, who passed away some years ago, um, he had mental retardation of what what they called it back then. Now it's intellectual delay, but I, you know, we just lived together. That that that's what we did. Um, life was life, and it was it was not 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 normal. Um, so. Growing up, we did unified bowling leagues. And for anyone out there who doesn't know what that is, that means that um, people from the normal side of life mix with people with a developmental disability. And you join leagues together. They can be bowling leagues, soccer leagues, baseball, basketball. So I did a lot of that growing up. And when I say a lot of it from the age of five years old, I can remember dancing the thriller (laughs) at dinner (laughs) dances all the way up until at least 14 years of age. Um, So that's kind of how I got to know the population and to know what exactly the developmental disabled were looking for per se. So like, you know, you grow up around all this stuff. Like I I personally didn't. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very different for me. So a lot of the stuff, you know, you're throwing at me like is brand new. <laughs> and like it's it's really awesome to see how much you guys care and how much like, you know, time and effort you put into this. This Man, is like thank you, from thank the, you. from the ground up. And like you you used to work, you know, for other facilities before mm-hmm. this. So kind of what what made you you know, be like, hey, I'm doing this. I'm starting my own business. I'm like, I'm ready to do this. Well, I think the first inclination I got was when I got fired. <laughs> That'll do it. You every know, time. I think everybody goes through that situation. They, they get fired and they're like, oh, I'll show you. But, you know, you, you really can't do it that quick. But... I think the moment that I saw it was a real possibility was when I noticed that I was good at a lot of things, but I was great at working with people with developmental disabilities. And it's it's kind of wild to say because everybody, anybody can do it, but you have to be in touch with your, with your people skills. Um, from the age of roughly, I think, 14, to 19, yeah, almost five years, I worked at Burger King. Um, And in that time, I came across some of the most crazy, normal people that you could ever meet. (laughs) And I had to calm down a lot of wild situations and these people weren't diagnosed with anything. Mm -hmm. So when I got into the field in which and professionally that 
I had to help calm somebody down from being upset about something and I knew their diagnosis. I knew the things that can help calm them now. I was like, man, this is a piece of cake. I actually thought I was getting away. Like, man, you guys are paying me to do this. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And then, you know, like when, first off, like how many years old is the business? Uh, well, we're going on three years old. Um, you know, technically to our paperwork, we're three years old, but we didn't get our first client until around April. Um, so come next year of 2020, April of 2020, will be our three year anniversary. Um, and in that time, we have grown substantial, substantially, um, which a lot of people don't understand. But again, I've been doing this professionally since 18, 19 years old. Um, I'm now 34, um, you know, it was in my 30s that I really put the, put my foot to the gas and we really, you know, progressed. Um, but at that, I, I, I honestly got to say at 27 is when I made the, the final decision. Like, I need to learn everything that I can. I need to stop, you know, making excuses. I need to stop blaming my my supervisor stop blaming my manager stop blaming my wife my kids i need just i just need to go ahead and dive into it i um, think that's a decision that a lot of people you know who start businesses make because yeah. at some point you got to realize most of the reason you're not doing something is your own fault oh yes and yes. like you know anybody who's starting anything out there that's like what it is. That's that's mm -hmm. you have to put the responsibility on yourself. Like you can sit at work all day and you can complain that oh this is his fault, this is her <laughs> fault. But in the end, like if you're not doing something to make it to make the the problem better or make the problem resolve, then it's also your fault. Oh, you yeah. need to either tell that person or be mm -hmm. I don't know if blunt's the right word, but you just gotta work together with people a lot. I, I think blunt is actually the best word <laughs> <laughs> because. Um, there's so many circumstances. Um, we just had a seminar that I was sitting in today. It's called CEO Boot Camp. Um, I want to give a big shout out to the Lucas County Board of DD for putting it together. I think they found a great group of speakers. They had a phenomenal layout on how they did it. And there's actually um, 16 more hours that we're doing. There are eight hours for, um, every, for the next three Thursdays that we're doing them. But people get caught in the rut of just complaints. Complaint, 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 complaint. And it's not until you find that, okay, I'm gonna change it right here. Do you really get out of that? Um, it, it's so easy to complain. It's so easy to point the finger. You know, until we look back at ourselves and really decide, like, what am I going to do? I got fired, man, um, and th this was this was probably the one that hit the hardest. Um, after the day after Christmas, and this was a Christmas like the Wii had came out that year. About my oldest, the Wii. You know, we got <laughs> Guitar Hero. We, we jamming. We're having a good time. <laughs> we enjoying ourselves. The day after Christmas, I get a text message, basically on my company phone, <laughs> telling me it's no longer I'm, my services are no longer needed. Please come in for an exit evaluation and bring in all your company supplies. Like that was bold of them to even do that. Because if I was any other type of person, I'm. <laughs> Cut. Yeah, <laughs> would have broke absolutely. the phone, everything else. But, you know, I can laugh about it now because of where I am. But that, that was a scary situation. I'm like the day after Christmas. I can't even go look for a job right now. I got to yeah. wait till after New Year's at beer minimum. Well, so was that like kind of like the final kick in the butt that was like, dude, it's time to like make this happen? I still think at that time I was more or less still searching. Um, it, it was, it was a push to look for someplace more stable, um, which I ended up finding the, the next company I went, I, 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 I succeeded with them for at least you, eight years and where I got the bulk of my experience and, and supervising, um, and management skills and, um, a lot of what they, what they taught me there lives on. Um, from what I do now. 
So. And that's that's when I first met you because you were always you know running around on the phone, yeah. all like busy, <laughs> right? You know, five kids, mm-hmm. busy all the time. <laughs> and then it was crazy because it was just like one day. It was literally out of the blue. It was just like, hey, Tony has a business. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like since when? Right. And it's been crazy to watch you guys kind of just like explode yeah <laughs> and like now you know, now you're like trying to do everything you know and it's mm-hmm. it's awesome to watch but like when your when your business started to grow you wanted to start you know being more vocal about not only like the, the business aspect of it but helping spread the word of you know these these this group of people these individuals lives and you, you you're trying to make it better like more out there for people to understand not mm-hmm. only how like they live normal just like the rest of us but also like the best ways to help take care of them with your staff and you're trying to train everyone to do that so what's your take on like working with the individuals as a whole just like your philosophy on that it. that right there to me it, it was never work mm-hmm. you know i think that that was the greatest part about now there are certain parts of any Anything that you do that you really don't feel like doing. Um, I love speaking engagements. You know, I love to to go and speak with people and teach people. I don't always like to prep for it. (laughs) I know know that feeling. Yeah, you know, that's one of the the downsides to it. But I really enjoy, I, I, I used to love cooking. And we used to, I still do. I, you know, I enjoy, I, I wanted to be a culinary chef at one point. I use that with my clients. You know, I would go in and say, hey, I was watching Food Network. I saw this awesome recipe. How would you like to try it? And, you know, most of the time it was on their dime. They would pay for the stuff themselves. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, it would come out awesome. Now, when it messed up, I'll pay for it myself. (laughs) And hey, we're just gonna get some Burger King or something. But, um, and that's another thing that we're really trying to do is, give more motivation to the people that are working in there because we know that it's a rut it, you can get into a rut doing the same thing day in and day out and i guess that's where i changed as a person was to and maybe even a little selfishly i didn't want my day to be monotonous man. i worked four days in a factory and realized this ain't for me not for me man <laughs> i can't i know that it. feeling oh man i've been there <laughs> <laughs> terrible, bro. Terrible. But I could you could literally work with some of our individuals and every day be different. Like you can go in and say, hey, let's go putt putt. Hey, let's go play basketball. Hey, oh, you want to sit and watch TV today? That's cool. That's cool. So it's for me coming in the outside, you know, I don't have, you know, a lot of experience, knowledge in this field. What's mm-hmm. you know, what is the the difficulties of like starting a business like this, because in my eyes, and I, I could be completely wrong, but it's like, oh, it like blurs mm-hmm. the lines between like medical and like you know, a re- like a business expenses and like the government's involved. So how do you balance all those plates oh, and the man. laws and all of that stuff? Because it seems this- just the way you talk about it, I'm like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> it can be extremely overwhelming. Um, one of the things that I I tell people. Um, because I, I get I get it a lot from some under uh, some other staff. Now let me know if I veer off, but I get a lot of staff that come up that just because things aren't going their way, they'll say, "Oh, man, I'm gonna start my own company. Oh, I'm gonna start my own agency." Da, da, da. Go ahead. Everything that you need is out there. Like there, there, no one's hiding a secret key yeah. saying, no, you can't start an agency. Now I am putting together a program that's going to make it a little simpler and help people to be able to understand the, some of the avenues that you take. But some of the biggest things that you have to do is one, if you can't work for anybody for a long period of time, you won't be able to work for yourself. Yeah, because you have to motor, you have to be the one driving it. Exactly. <laughs> That's hard. Um, it, it, it is, you know, it's one of those things where you're gonna to have to learn how to take command. Because I'm even being the owner of a company, I'm still not the boss. You, every client that we serve tells me what to do. Yeah. I go to meetings, they're telling me all the things that I need to fix, and guess what? I'm hopping in the office, dancing along, telling them, guess what, guys? We gotta change this, this, and this. 
but they said they liked it. Di- now they're saying they like it this way, this way, and this way. And that's for every every business. Mm-hmm. You know, if enough people got together and told Amazon we didn't like their the color of their boxes, we didn't want their boxes being brown anymore. We want we like blue boxes. I guarantee you, you will get blue boxes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's one of the first things that I think I had to really grasp and get like. I don't own or run anything. It's the people that are around me. And then I have to put it together in a way that people understand why we are doing mm-hmm. the, the next part. Yeah. Um, you know, and aside from that, rules and regulations, they, they change every day. Um, and one of the reasons that they change is honestly to weed out people okay. who aren't in it for the right reasons. You know, I'm going to call a spade a spade. Anybody and everybody is not out to help uh, a person afflicted with a developmental disability. Um, There are some people who just want a lot of money and they want an easy way to do it. And Mm -hmm. actually, we're going through a lot of um, changes now with laws and rules because of that that make it a little little more difficult. But, I mean, it it weeds out the, the good and the bad. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, is there a lot of laws to navigate through on like how often does that stuff change? Oh man, they, I, I couldn't even tell you. It, it changes when enough problems arise. <laughs> you know, if you get ten people in the state of Ohio to have the same thing happen, ironically, then a new law can be written like that. You know that the and if you have too many medical situations that pop up, you can get a new law because of that. Um, A lot of it is really just because of human error, you know, but what's, what's like some, let's say for instance, right now, what, what's something that's kind of hard if there's any laws changing, like how, what do you have to adapt to right now? And what's that like as, as the owner of the business, you kind of have to steer that I'm sure because Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the I think the biggest thing right now is the EVV, um, that? and it's it's the electronic verification something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, the it's in there. Hey, w- look, there's a link to it, so you you know what it's about. <laughs> it's gonna show like right up here somewhere, um, but it, it basically it, it was done because people were were trying to f- fool Medicaid. Okay. And now when you go into the houses, you have to use an electronic device to clock in. So it gives your GPS location. Mm-hmm. Now, we went ahead and we got a, we thought we got a ahead of the curve. Um, we went over and we got a third party and we started with them in, from the beginning of the year. It's trying to get people out of the sense of using paper all of the time mm-hmm. um, into actually using digital documentation. That's the first part. Because uh, let's be honest, a lot of our staff and a lot of people who are really good at this are fairly older. Mm-hmm. And some of them have issues dealing with technology. Not all of them, but there are a hand few. Well, that's just common. Yeah, you board, know, it's, any, anywhere. it is what it is. Um, and I can't even say I'm the savviest on, on a lot of this stuff. But along with that, we're having problems still with people understanding that you need to clock in and clock out or nobody gets paid. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's where the biggest headache lies at this moment. Hmm. So what's kind of like some basic stuff you'd want people to know about this field as a whole? Like say we're talking to someone like knows absolutely nothing. Nothing. I, you know what, that, that's really hard to, to say because it's, you don't look, or at least I don't, and I don't want anyone, anybody else to look at a person who has a DD any different, you know, you see somebody in a wheelchair, you shouldn't think that you have to do everything for them right away. Mm-hmm. Um, you see somebody walking a little different. You shouldn't think the 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 very worst. I I really think one of the biggest here. Here's one. We're having more community integration with our clients. Mm-hmm. So if you have an individual who maybe moves next door to you, 
or if you guys both go on um, some type of outing and you just happen to see them or there's some scenario in which you're around someone who has a DD, treat them as a common adult. Yeah. You know, speak, give, um, <laughs> say, hey, how you doing? You know, just don't... <sighs> It still trips me out today. It's 2019, man, about to be 2020, and there's still these, like, grossed-out views. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I overhear, and people who don't know what I'm into at, uh, or know what I do for a living, I, you know, I still hear things being said. You know, be conscious of your words, I guess. Well, yeah, and I notice. I mean, I'm out there, you know, with you guys taking pictures and videos and stuff in the outings, and, I mean, people look. Yeah. It's just... I, you know, and it's it's just public perception, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, and I, as someone outside the box a little bit, you know, I, I think it has a lot to do with they literally just, like the average person doesn't have that much experience with someone with developmental disabilities. So they're right. like, they don't know how to act. Like mm -hmm. I, they don't know, um, you know, anything about the person, like they're, normal functioning people to, you know they just can't do certain things or you know maybe and they... i mean dude it'll trip you out and it'll trip most people out i really think that we have so many individuals who they have more physical disabilities than mental mm -hmm. i mean I, we have a guy who can break down your computer and rebuild it and make it a monster <laughs> like give me his number <laughs> look, <right? laughs> look, dude you should have saw when he first looked at our website he was like tony this is trash man <laughs> Like I need to, I need to get on this. You know, and that's that's awesome because I've, you know, I've gone to their houses and I'm taking photos, a couple mm -hmm. different individuals, and it's just like, it's no different than talking to anybody else. They crack me up. They're they're oh, funnier yeah. than most of the people I know. We have Dude. good times. We just, we just hang yes. out, play video games. I mean, whatever. And it's mm -hmm. it's just kind of like disturbing that so many people have like this weird views about developmental, dis or, sorry, developmental disabilities and it's, it's kind of a bummer so that's partly what we're here for we're trying to uh, change that perspective yeah man because if we can open the door of what uh, of what people are missing you know all those good times i really think it will change not only their mindset but it will open up those possibilities again of more people volunteering um that if like if there was anything that i could ask for that's what i really want more of um at, at some point we'll you know we're gonna dive in in future episodes and stuff with uh, about dsps on how to get them to pay more money on how to get managers to you know equate to what we need them to do but the community in general um you know, the, the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. I think it takes a village to raise anybody. Okay. You know, we all go through stuff, you know. So if we could do more things like that, not only will it uplift our community, it would uplift ourselves. You know, I think our souls are, are hurting for stuff like that, bro. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, everybody's so busy nowadays and it, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's hard for people to do anything anymore. But, like, I personally... I like I volunteer for stuff and I'm super busy all the time but right. it really does you know it makes you feel better it makes you feel like you've like you know made a difference in the community mm -hmm. not even for developmental disability just anything anything like, right when you help people you feel better no matter yes. what you're doing like even sometimes you sign up for an event or you need to volunteer at and you're just like yeah. I do not want to get <laughs> up and go do this but like when you do it you feel great. Yeah, yeah like, you, you're surprised. You never feel bad for helping someone. Yeah. And, like, that's that's kind of, like, the direction that I think should steer everybody's judgment on everything. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not helping somebody, then what are you doing? Like, yeah, you're just like, making it... Why, <laughs> why make things worse? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, there's, there's no reason not to give at least 30, 40, 50 minutes of your time. You don't even have to make it a whole hour because, you know, 10 minutes you can... You, you know, you can waste somewhere else. <laughs> but yeah, man, and, and get your family involved. I think that's another thing that's really missing, man. Again, I'm not skeeved out by like any of this because I was involved since I was a kid, you know, and I even try to get my kids involved as much as possible. So they're not 
looking at anybody like you talking about a four or five year old yeah i understand they see a big wheelchair they're gonna say whoa what was that yeah. but you know by the time nine ten eleven hits for them to not have an understanding or a grasp of that it's it's kind of a, of a red flag like hey you need to integrate a little more so you know your business you've been growing pretty steadily over the last few years what are the mm -hmm. kind of the challenges that come along with something like that oh everybody wants more money <laughs> <laughs> hey i feel you there yeah right and and that's the thing everybody does um and i can honestly say in at friends for life at least 75 percent of people earn deserve more mm -hmm. um i really feel it's true the the hardest part about it is that we're set on a on a pay rate that's that that can't be budged unless people go out and vote and we move certain bills through mm -hmm. through the Senate and through um, through the government. You know, Medicaid, they're they can only give so much. They only can give what they have and they only have what the taxpayers pay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's one of the the misconceptions I think a lot of people get is like I'm going to own a private jet from doing this. Like no, that's that's not the goal. Well, the, you, you still have a, a building to pay yeah, for yeah. overhead. I mean, nothing's cheap at exactly. all. Exactly, and you know when you want good quality people, you have to pay them because they will go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sad to call. I'm not gonna really call people names, but there are people out here who go after the next quarter, the next 50 cents versus the longevity of something. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, we, we have had people come in who, who were pretty good, who we couldn't pay what they wanted, but they're still not thinking like, dude, we're still a startup. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, in, in business terms, we are still in our infancy. Like, yeah, three years. Is yeah, that, that's really young. <laughs> For the statistics of every, what, 50% of businesses fail in the first year, then another 50% fail in the next three. Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. and then another 25 in the next seven. Like, that is, you know, you got to give some room to grow. But that's one of the hardest things. And then staying up on the times and trends. Well, before before we get into that, is it even like across the board? Because my wife works in the same field, mm -hmm. so I mean, it seems like it's just hard to get anybody to work. It's like in the field in general, is hard, you know, yeah. because it's just I don't want to say it's a niche field, but it's like it, it. Like I said earlier, it's like partly medical ish, partly like caretaking, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of this weird blend, and it takes like a, a special. Um, like type of caring person to do the work in general, which is hard enough to come by. Right. So like, yeah, I could understand that it's it's pretty difficult to maybe get people. And then you just have your normal turnover rate mm -hmm. that you would have with any business. Yeah. Like sometimes <laughs> people just quit and there's nothing you can do about do it. it. Like yeah. it, I, I just, there's no like metric that can, that can weave that out. Like some people are just like, mm -hmm. sorry, dude, peace out. Like they don't have a reason. They just, that's just yeah, the nature just... of the beast, man. <laughs> yeah. So... But but yeah, I, I under definitely understand what you're saying. Like yeah, it, dude, it is r really like the we compete honestly with some of the biggest names out there. This field of work, and most people don't think of it like that. We're mm -hmm. like, well, no, you guys are just a bunch of agencies competing with each other. Like, no, I compete with Walmart. Yeah, because someone can leave here, maybe making ten dollars an hour, and go work there for almost thirteen. Mm -hmm. And don't have to worry about whether or not somebody's getting their medication. Don't have yeah. to worry whether or not somebody's taking a shower. Don't have to worry about somebody's running out into the middle of the street or something. You know, so there's so many pros and cons to it. Like when it's good, it's good. When it's great, it's great. But when somebody sees a full court steak, they're like yeah. deuces. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, and, it's a brutal market out there for anything, no yeah. matter what you're doing. Right, exactly. I mean, and you know, there's so many people, you know, I, I promote education 100%. If you go to school, continue going to school, if that's what's for you. If not, you know, find your niche, learn it, learn it, learn it. Um, but, we get a lot of people who come in who are going to school 
who are great. Then they tell me what they're taking. There's some kind of science, analytical, something, something. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh I got you for four years. Tops. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, that's just the nature of it. Yeah, it's the nature of the beast, man. It's, But honestly, you know, the funny thing is no matter what, even though, you know, I do this, I love this. I'm an entrepreneur in the heart. You know, it is. You know, and it's part of something I think my wife hates about me, <laughs> but she loves it at the same time. Um, I I wake up and I'm invigorated about the problems. I get so excited. I don't like unnecessary problems, oh, yeah. but I can handle them. You know, and just and figuring I can, them out. Yeah, is the is the game, dude? It, it it it's like it's such a rush. To figure it out when I like I come I come in a room brainstorming and all of that and people are telling me stuff and you know a lot of my management team I can't I need them to learn and do better and get better so I can't give them all the answers right away mm -hmm. so like they shoot off four or five different things I'm already thinking everything that needs to be done but yeah. I almost have to do and I don't mean it's in no disrespect you know even if you're watching I, I don't want to mean I'm not being disrespectful. Sorry. <laughs> um, I already know the answers, but I have to do them almost like they're children and have them work it through. Mm -hmm. um, and I do that psychologically because all of the books that I read, especially the brain books that I read, that say that you have to create those neural connect connections in order so next time they come in that situation, they know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time you teach a kid or um, you, even your individual, since we're talking on the DD side, how to tie a shoe or how to do a certain thing. You're just not going to show them the one time and leave it there. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to put them through that situation multiple times. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have that stress build up so they can be able to figure out how to do it in a certain environment. Absolutely. So uh, next up on the agenda, I know I cut you off a little mm. short there on the, uh, the next topic. You're but... fine. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So yeah, we were like, what are some other issues that you kind of have that you're trying to resolve? Not even just as a business, but like overall with, you know, the field, anything. Well, I, time management is always, I think, the toughest for the majority. Mm -hmm. um, my issues are always ever ranging. Um, not only am I into, you know, I'm. I'm do this. I, I dabble with um, you know real estate situations. I um, working on books and, and things like that. So uh, there's always things to do. Um, another major thing that I'm really trying to do is grow my marriage. You know, I'm a, you as a married man. You you understand that. Yeah. Um, especially with being as busy as we are, but I'm trying to take that, put that in a full focus because majority of our day is built on the business yeah. <laughs> most of the yeah. time. I mean, you run it together, um, so. Yes, right. That, that doesn't take away any stress, I'm <laughs> yeah, sure. Right, you know, it, it, the call, a call to the accountant can really get us arguing really <laughs> fast. But, um, we, you know, we're trying to figure out how if, if we can make things work so seemingly smooth between us, maybe it can translate elsewhere, too. Oh, absolutely. You know? and There's so, no way it wouldn't. Exactly. So that's one of the things that I've really been on um, lately. My children, mm -hmm. um, I've, I've really tried to help motivate them. Each one of them have tried to do, well, my top three. I have tried to do their own um, business ventures, yeah. um, things to that nature, and you know, dealing with day to day school. Um, but one thing I have decided is each month I'm taking on another task that I don't normally do. Whew. Oh gosh! And you're this trying month, to, you're trying to lose your mind. Yeah, <laughs> I've you already kind of lost it. <laughs> but there's a there's a trick to it. It, it's one tax that my wife used to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that You didn't add that part. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, man. And it is tough. And this this month um, was laundry. Oh, man. Oh, tell me about it. Five kids, a wife, and a puppy. 
who just ha- um, happened to have diarrhea. Oh my god! <laughs> you can count me out, dude. I never. I haven't washed my own drawers in years. I'm telling you. That's probably why you smell so good. Yeah, right? <laughs> I don't know about now because I think I washed this shirt. <laughs> but, you know, that, um, it gives you a new perspective, bro. Mm-hmm. It, it really does. Um, and if there's anybody out there who, if you ever feel like you're in a rut just day in and day out, you, you have you do something like that. Shake it up. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. I'm always doing random stuff like mm-hmm. continuously i will like i don't know if that's if this is the right term or not but i'm kind of like a whimsical guy like i will do things on a whimsical. whim not whimsical <laughs> in that maybe maybe we haven't got you haven't gotten to know me that well yet but in a in a in every day i'm always trying to like either learn something new or try and do something that i'm uncomfortable with mm-hmm. because i'm i always feel like the more uncomfortable situations you put yourself in, like it kind of like dissipates all of the stress and everything that you like right, that right. you feel because all it takes to like the, the only thing blocking you from from being scared or like anxious about a new thing or something that you're like don't understand is like you're one book away from being like or one like internet course away from being like Oh, that's it, right? Like, and I, well, you know, hey, have you ever brushed your teeth with? Uh, well, are you right handed or left handed? Baking soda. No, <laughs> I had yeah. that. That's old school, right no. there. Yeah, right handed or left handed? Right handed. Right handed. Brush your teeth with your left hand. I'll do that, dude. It's going to flip your top. I'm telling you, it's like. And it, it, it actually proves that like it helps for, using form a different new, part of your brain. New, new, yeah, you know how. Do, most of us, when we put on our clothes and stuff, we put on the same way. Like when you take a shower, you wash the same pit at the same time. You know, yeah. we're, we're, you know, I know I do. I have this like whole little routine. So just break it, up the cycle. Break it up. Yeah. You know, just break it all the way up, and you. You might find yourself discombobulated. I think I did it and I left out of the house without my wallet and sunglasses. <laughs> I, I was lost, but. It made me actually conscious enough the next time I was thinking about all those mm-hmm. things, like to make sure that I had them. And I mean, cause we get on this automated system too many times. And I mean, all of that actually reverts to back to what we were saying about this field of work. People go in and help people, but you're on this automated system to do this, yeah. this, 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 and this. And then you're just looking at your watch and like, hmm, let me get on Facebook till it's time to go. Yeah. While well, completely leaving the individual, <laughs> you know, like. And that's nope. not a good thing. And you know, that's it's good that you see that because that's just like a a sign that you're gonna continuously like shift things around to make them work better and Mm -hmm. like a lot of people get in that rut they're so comfortable with and i hear it all the time like we've always done it that way like if you question something like why (laughs) why are we doing this it's very outdated it doesn't work anymore like it's not efficient like that's how it's always been done like well yeah but a lot of things have changed from 2000 to 2000 (laughs) you know 19 right like i can watch movies on my cell phone now like things are different so I think that's awesome. I think that's a great outlook. Mm-hmm. No matter what, business, normal day-to-day life, I mean, it's like it makes you see things differently. It makes yeah. you, you know, conscious of things you weren't conscious of before. And, like, a lot of the world today focuses on, like, any media, anything is all about, like, depression, anxiety. And not to say that, you know, putting your clothes on backwards one day a week is going to ch- affect that, <laughs> but it definitely makes you internalize i think right think right. about stuff like I'm, why why am i doing this this mm-hmm. way like why am i feeling like that or whatever so it has a lot of business impact because it you, you look at your business that way too from the outside yeah, you're just it, like it really why helps. are we doing this you know mm-hmm. and there's th- having that extra second of asking why mm-hmm. you know a lot of people need that if you don't have that sometimes you might, you're liable to walk out in the middle of the road and, you know, get hit by a damn truck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you need, you need to have that sometimes because there are more times than not that I'm actually in the gym running on the treadmill and I'm thinking about, hmm, 
is this decision the best? You know, do I really need to let go of this person? Mm -hmm. Do I need to let this individual know that we can't help them? Have we tried everything that we could? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it definitely comes full of circle in every standpoint. So I'm kind of curious. You said earlier you went to this like awesome big conference. I had no idea you were going oh. to this thing. So like, <laughs> what are some takeaways from that? I, I, uh, well, you were sending me pictures like, hey, I'm with the CEO, <laughs> look at me. I'm like, dang, Tony, what are you doing? Dude, um, first and foremost, I want to say, I like, I, I want to apologize to the board personally for just for my personal thoughts. Cause I was thinking like, all right, this is going to be for some flimsy people who Man. didn't didn't do their research, never like, you know, probably went to school, got a degree, and then just say, oh, I want to open up an agency because mm -hmm. people do it. Not saying it's a terrible idea, but my personal belief, you need to work somewhere for at least four to six years in management, and uh, maybe another five or so as a DSP. But anyway, I, I went in with a skeptic mindset mm -hmm. yeah. and was blown away by the, the open honesty of some of the larger agencies in the city who were very open with their answers and candid about the things that they're going through and the, versus the things that we're going through, and they're not different. Well, that's just you know? gonna make the community stronger when exactly. everyone's on the same team, you know? <laughs> you know, so I, I definitely think that I grew a little bit during that. And like I said, we have two more sessions. Um, some of the takeaways, honest, well, let me put it like this. They didn't teach me too much, too much of anything new because a lot of the stuff that was based upon, I have read in books already. Mm -hmm. um, and some there were four CEOs that were already sitting up there and I asked them the books that they were reading and what they, um, what they enjoyed to read or what was their favorite book and mm -hmm. what was the books that they read this year um, thus far. Less, uh, if it was more than three, just up to three. Um, two of them, we're reading a book that my wife and I just just finished. One lady f just finished a book that um, I read sometime last year. And the other gentleman, I can't remember which one he said, or, or he yeah. didn't even say one. But anyway, it was more or less like, it just made me feel like, it was almost like a counseling session. I wasn't alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, and sometimes it feels good to have that because, man, I'm telling you, the the CEO spot can be dark and lonely, bro. Like it's lonely at the top. It's lonely <laughs> at the top, you know. <laughs> Except with my ace of spades, no. <laughs> but okay, yeah. So like, you know, it's cool. It is always cool to get together with people who have similar, um, not even like visions, but like. And I could be completely wrong, but just personal experience, I've found to run into another person that just actually reads books for enjoyment is rare enough. No, right. And then to have some, like people that are in it, like have a drive to like, not necessarily even be an entrepreneur, just to do something. I, right. I see people, like I'm huge, I love social media, and I know a lot of people talk smack on it because they're like, oh, it's corrupting our children, and like, yeah. whatever, man. Like, yeah. I, I literally have connected with so many people that I would have never met before because of it. And it'd be mm -hmm. like, dude, what is that book you just posted? What is that? <laughs> and it's cool and it grows. But like, I'm really, really stoked. And I think you and I kind of like started really getting to like back and forth because like we met each other and we were at family events here and there and stuff. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we're just like doing stuff together all the time now. Yeah. And like we started talking about books and outlook on life and um, you know, we started, you and I are sharing books all the time. They're like, dude, I just read this book. Like, right. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to buy that one. We both have a lot in, in common in that aspect. So like, I guess well, I, the whole point convoluted I'm getting to <laughs> is what is the last book you read? What is it? I want to oh, know. Oh, oh, well, I'm did, asking you a I question. I thought you were about to ask me no, like a two-party. What is the last book you read? The, um, I'm terrible with titles, so don't feel bad. The CEO Next Door. The CEO Next Door. Mm -hmm. So 
what was like the premise of the whole book? Synopsis. The uh, basic breakdown is the com- it, there was a company who took they wanted to know what were all of the 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 pros of a CEO and mm-hmm. all of the cons of the people who couldn't become CEO, who yeah. didn't cut it. Um, they actually have a program in which you can go through and you can rate yourself and see if you're CEO material, basically. Mm-hmm. All right. And it basically shows that CEOs have more determination, more drive. They're willing to start from the bottom to get to the top. Mm-hmm. And everything that is an issue, they will put it on their shoulders and delegate appropriately. Yeah. Like that is, the, the, I think that's the perfect breakdown of the book for me. Well, and that's, I think everyone that has that, not not even necessarily CEO mentality, but the, a, a person that's willing to put the weight on their shoulder. Yeah. I think they have a hard time delegating because they want everything to be perfect, perfect all the time. And that's, and the, perfect isn't a real thing. Like everybody knows oh, that. Oh yeah. But it's, it's like. It's you, far from it. <laughs> like I see in myself all the time, you know, I, I'm constantly have to work with a bunch of other people mm-hmm. and it's like, sometimes I have to tell myself like, just let them do it. <laughs> like it's never going to be the way you want it. And it's really hard to mm-hmm. find a team that is like, everyone's on the same page. Like there's very few people I can hand things to. And just trust it to get done the done. way I actually like can see it. I, I literally know like one or two people I can can literally say, like my mm-hmm. friend Jason. I can be like, Jason, this is, I'm going to give you 20 video clips. And I have a vision in my head. I pick out the music. Like, right, right. do your thing. And he hands it back to me. And like the first edit I get, I'm like, dude, nailed it. Like Love it. those kind of people <laughs> are super rare. So like, it, it's, it's very difficult. And what I've learned in order to get somebody like that, you guys, um, not to take it too metaphysical right now. I'm, I'm let's get metaphysical, but, <laughs> baby. But you guys have to, for one, you have to link. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to have the same type of... Uh, you, you, like if you're an extrovert, he has to be an extrovert also. You guys have to enjoy some of the same things. You like certain coffee. If he likes that kind of coffee, if you guys link on those kind of things, most likely he will be able to get closer to that vision of what you expect versus if He's an introvert. You're an extrovert. He hates coffee. You love yeah. it. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's funny that you say that because specifically in this relationship, we have a lot of things in, in common, but we also have a lot of things that we don't have in common. I, I, but, I, it, but like the media like we love video. We love mm-hmm. creating just for the sake of it. Like why not like just because it's fun like right, i don't right. play video games i don't have i don't play i don't even know how to play euchre like at the place yeah. i work we had a euchre <laughs> tournament today and they're like come on play i'm like bro i don't know how like i never learned because i'm just a nerd and like it's so cool that like you can just like when you're around people like that you're just like you get it you're just yeah. like bro here's my idea and he's hyper specialized in his what he does, mm-hmm. and I'm I, I would I'm more of a generalist. Like I don't know, I'm not like super really good at one thing. I just kind of am always all over the place yeah. and have my fingers and everything. And it's it's cool to have people you can trust to like. Just hand I it. know you're gonna do an awesome job at this, and like, and that's that's like a great thing to have. So like the book obviously kind of like mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of steered you in that direction with like that mindset. Oh yeah, and, definitely, man. I I have so many books, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, I know, coming coming to you know about CEOs and stuff and all of those things. Like, um, yeah, I think you were you saw me when I was reading. Um, what's that? The the hugest book I ever seen. Yeah. I don't know, it was like four <laughs> inches thick, man. I was like, oh, what is that, dude? Oh man, uh, it was from the author of the Forty Eight Laws of Power. Um, <sighs> The human human nature. Oh yeah, man, human I, nature. I think that's what it was called. It, it, it was something uh, something to that to that extent. Um, look, it, it it exploded my brain. That but, was the biggest book I've ever seen. It, I thought you were reading the Bible. I was like, <laughs> what is this guy doing? Look, man. After I read that, I literally had to take at least three weeks off of reading. <laughs> like I, I mean, I my brain. And not only did I read it, I audio booked it too. 
My man. I audio booked it as I was running every day because I really wanted to uh, absorb, absorb it. it. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I was like, man, I need this info. Well, you need 10 years to absorb that thing. <laughs> Sit that on your chair. I'm telling you, a couple like, inches. dude, my brain was, I mean, my wife called me a robot for a long. She was like, what, are <laughs> you just that. trying to I learn human nature? I'm like, oh, human nature. It was like, um, human nature. Dude, that... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the name. We we're going to put the, the title <laughs> yeah, right well, here. Don't worry about that. Yeah. We, uh, so I actually just finished a book that I've been meaning to read for a long time. And I have this habit. For for one year, I read, my goal was to read 100 books. So I that was last year. I was like my goal of the year. Uh -huh. And like there was a point where I could, like, you have to choose at some point like what books you're going to read. So yeah. I literally just started going to the library and like at random picking like any, I'd like walk and be like, oh, uh, yep, grab it. And uh, I, I got into the habit of just like picking random books to either read or listen to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just finished Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. Oh, uh, man. Fortunately, you know, just yeah. recently passed away. Rest uh, him. Yeah. But he, it was crazy because I really enjoy reading books outside of anything that I would normally even pretend to care about. Like, I'm no chef, man. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I could probably grill an okay steak, but other than that, like, I'm nowhere near any level. And really get those outside perspectives of stuff that you don't even Just, think you care about. Right. And the funny thing is, is every book I have ever read about, like, through anybody who's had, like, even a big a big radio, media presence, CEO, famous person, adventurer, explorer, whatever, whoever, they all say the same freaking thing. They're always all the same thing. Work your ass off, off right? <laughs> and just what you believe in, do it. Do it, right. That's, if I had to sum up every book I've ever read, it would come down to those two it, things. It is those two. It is ex it's exactly it. I mean, I, I cannot stress to you more, and, and you have to work your ass off. I think the only thing I would add to that is longer than what you expect to. Forever, yeah. until you're dead. You're like, <laughs> you're ne if you're never going, if you ever reach your goal, then your goals wasn't set high enough. Well, that's that's the risk you take and do it. We just started the podcast today, mm -hmm. and I bet you nobody will make it through the whole first thing, because it's the first one. <laughs> it's the first but one. But we can't expect 100,000 people to listen to this on exactly. day one, you know? It could take two, three years for it to catch mm -hmm. on or more, And we'll like, still be here. We'll still be here. <laughs> with guests. And all that. And big microphones and money. <laughs> but just give us time. A little bit. <laughs> so, like, you know, kind of bring it back full circle. Like, I think... Knowledge is very important. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm no entrepreneur, man. I just, I really just do the things I do. I like video, film, any exploring of anything. I like talking to people. Like, I just like to hang out. And like, right, right. you know, starting your own business is almost like, for me, an adventurer kind of nature dork guy. Yeah. Like, it's very similar avenues because you just jumped in. Like, you did your research. You did your, your studying. You mm -hmm. did your preparation. And then at some point, you I always call it, it's like the metaphor I always use is jumping off the cliff, the cliff. into the ocean. You're, right. you're standing at the cliff, and I'm sure this is cliche, but like it's the only way I can no, describe I, it. I, I love it. Because I love like, it. You, you get to the, to the edge, and you're like, this is the decision where I make. Do I stay here where it's comfortable and safe? Mm-hmm. And there's no risk. There's no whatever. I just in my comfort zone all the time. I could just stand here and absorb the beautiful view. Or do I jump off the cliff and hope, hope. that that water is deep <laughs> enough, man? And like, that's why I really admire people who take that business plunge or the plunge to go hike the Pacific Crest Trail or to go skydiving or to say someone just who who's scared to walk out their front door. You know, right. like crippled by anxiety takes that step. Right, like, right. I really admire that in people when they get to the edge of the cliff mm -hmm. and they don't turn around. And like, that's why I'm so on board with what you're doing. Thank that's you. why Thank I agreed you. to do this with you because Thank like, you, you jumped, My man. man. <laughs> you're, only, you're one of the few people I know who jumps. And hey. I, like, when the situation comes up, you never go, Eh, I'm gonna turn around and go back. Like, I think we're both jumpers, man. Like, oh, we, we see yeah. the we have visions, and like, 
I don't want it to sound arrogant. Like I do stupid. No, I'm not. No, I wouldn't. This, I'm not even saying I'm like successful in any it, in any escapade or manner. But like, I enjoy the jumping off the cliff and like hoping. And sometimes you hit the bottom. and You're like, crap. I'm paralyzed. Sometimes you, there's sucks. another little cliff underneath you. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't it. even know about. Yeah, like, like oh, I, I, I sprained my ankle. <laughs> get some bumps and bruises. But you know, there, because you're a jumper. What uh, I, I I am there and. Another thing, like we didn't really get deep into, and maybe we can um, re- talk about it more on other um, the next five hundred. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't my first business. Yeah, you know, I've my wife and I had multiple other businesses that we we tried, and what? you know, I didn't know that about. It. I didn't know. Oh yeah, man. So to be continued (laughs) but yeah there's i mean there's multiple other things and i have so many failures on on our back um before i realize what i know Mm -hmm. you know this is what i know versus all that other stuff it was like i had an idea yeah (laughs) but it didn't really pan through but a lot of people get scared of that they make that first if they even make the jump but the people will make the first jump and fail and they'll go back to their to their safe place. Mm-hmm. Like, let's go over to these green plains. It's safe over here to these green plains. And they never go back to the cliff again. Yeah. But always say about what they think that they want or the things that they really want to have. Well, and that's it is scary. I mean Oh yeah, definitely. And, he, and I've also failed a million times. I mean I've the the most recent story of my failure, if you must know, is I yes, you know, I've please. been always trying to improve my production quality of everything. Like I'm not claiming to be a great videographer of any sort, but nah, I love you, it. That's what you told me. No, <laughs> uh, but uh, so I was I was filming my buddy. He has a, he owns a fly fishing shop in in Sylvania, mm-hmm. and I went out with him northern Michigan, filming him in his boat. I had all my camera gear. Just bought this drone. Literally, it shipped to my house a couple days before we went out. First time I've basically flown this thing. I flew it like twice just to see how it handled. Uh-huh. Ten minutes into the shoot, in the river, hit a tree, oh. fell into the river. Eight hundred bucks down the chute. Oh, that's my most oh. recent failure. So I had to buy another <laughs> one because I had more stuff I had to shoot. I'm sorry to laugh. So like. Yeah, oh, failure is gosh. just, no, it's hilarious. Yeah. It wasn't funny at the time. Like, it ruined, it was, like, right at the beginning in the, the, the shoot. And I was like, well, I guess I have to sulk over this for the rest of the day. But, uh, you know, it, it's funny. Like, so many people are scared to, like, mess up or, or look stupid. Mm-hmm. But, like, who cares, man? Like, you're, you, right. you do what you got to do to make yourself happy or make I, yourself. Dude, this is the time. The, to do it because personally, I think memories at in 2019 going on 2020 are so like shot. Like people are, it's too much information going in. Oh yeah. So if you fail at one thing, you can rise up on something else the next week. You can learn. I mean, and don't take this the wrong way. I mean, I no. I went to college. I did. I did my time with the books, and it took me, you know, six years to graduate because I was working and stuff. But like, for what from what my interests are and what I like to do, I will never go back to school. Like, gotcha. You, yeah, I might eat those words someday, but like, no, I won't. can go <laughs> for okay for for what is a school would cost it was like thirty forty thousand dollars or so. Yeah, and that's just here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I can literally spend that money on real life experience i could spend i could spend 10 grand to go explore in africa like to learn how to film african savannah or mm-hmm. i could spend 10 grand on books and i could learn anything i wanted to without people telling me what i had to learn right and i think just the self driven aspect of it is really like i don't know i think driving yourself to learn is much more important than than school to a certain extent i don't i'm not in anything specialized so yeah. Does well, it, does I, it I get it 100, 100 because, um, you know, I I started school um, originally, like I said, for culinary arts. That didn't work out, family dynamic and everything. Um, then the next time I tried to go back for social work and just said, like, I 
didn't like it. It was terrible for me. <laughs> like not, and that's no shot to anybody who was actually to do it. But that's not. I didn't learn that way. I couldn't learn that way. But yeah, absolutely. I definitely really think that in order for anybody to be able to be great at what they are, they have to. I mean, they necessarily necessarily have to love it. There, there's no way that you can do something, be phenomenal at it, and not love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's no way that I could do any any of this stuff that I'm doing right now, like filming or, you know, like going and venturing and stuff right, or right, even like right. helping you with what you're doing without liking it. Because even making a podcast or, you know, taking a couple pictures while at an outing or video or whatever, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like a time-consuming thing. And if you don't like it, like you're just... It's a lot of it, work. It'll you drive you to... nuts, man. Yeah. It, 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 you know, and then some of the necessary things that we have to do day to day in the office are necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for people to act and strive for that, like, oh, I just want to be in the office. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, I really think people just really want to be lazy. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and then they'll get in there and they see Okay, I'm too lazy. <laughs> I want to do something. I would love to be lazy, but I just don't have the time for it. <laughs> well, to wrap things up, I mean, we covered a lot of ground today. I think so, too. Especially for a, a, a first podcast. Right. But, like, you know, I think overall we have a long way to go. We gotta. Yes. We're gonna follow the business as it grows. We're gonna. Yes. We're gonna learn some lessons in future episodes. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a lot more guests from yes. the community, and we're going to have a lot of fun. People, we already have guests scheduled too. That's what I'm happy about. Yeah, and people are already signing on. Like, cool. <laughs> and you know, there's gonna be a lot more stuff that we're gonna dig into. But we just wanted to get everybody kind of to know me, Paul, and Tony. Tony. Whoa. CEO. -ni. Uh, <laughs> CEO, -ni, I like it. Uh, and you know, thanks. If you made it all the way through, thanks for listening. Thank you. Good night, world. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the Friends for Life podcast. Don't forget to help us out by hitting that subscribe button. We got a bunch more stuff coming for you. See you next time.